insights. So in this new role, I'd be taking any valuable insights that I get from my interactions with physicians. Mm. And it's, yeah, it's a two-way communication. Not only would mm. I be executing on what our framework is and what the tactics are, but I would also be listening to the physicians and then reporting back what I hear saying, hey, this is our strategy. This episode of the Smart Athlete Podcast is brought to you by Solpre, skincare for athletes. Whether you're in the gym, on the mats, on the road, or in the pool, we protect your skin so you're more comfortable in your own body. To learn more, go to solpre.com. Today on the Smart Athlete Podcast, my guest is a competitive triathlete who's had a podium finish at St. Croix in 2014. He also happens to be a double threat. He has his doctorate in pharmacy and his MBA. Welcome to the show today, Corey Robinson. Hey, everyone. Thanks for having me, Jesse. No problem. Thanks for coming on. I know you've been, I'll call you notoriously difficult to get a hold of because <laughs> you seem very, very busy, which is good, hopefully. Um, so I kind of want to jump a little bit just straight into like what you do because um, so episode three, I had Todd Buckingham on who referred me to talk to you and Todd mentioned he said, quote, this is what Todd told me. He said, you're in bar- biopharmaceutical global marketing for rare diseases. So what does that actually mean? <laughs> yeah, so um, I guess to give you a brief overview of what I currently do. So I'm in a global role. Um, so it's largely focused on strategy for the company. And we, I support a few products, but primarily one that treats a rare disease. It affects one in 100,000 people worldwide. Um, and we have, a, we have a treatment for it. And a lot of the marketing and strategy around it goes to raising awareness as well as um, just kind of understanding of the disease because it is so rare that even physicians that are trained um, in these type of diseases may have never even heard of it. Um, so a lot of it is educational. Um, but yeah, from my global position, I do a lot of working with regional colleagues as well as country level colleagues um, that then can do their job better at a local re- at a local um, a local country level position. So I'm kind of curious <laughs> what what came first, the MBA or the pharmacy degree, or were they were they conjoined? Yeah, so I guess they were conjoined, I would say. Um, I started off down a pharmacy track, and then about halfway through my pharmacy education, um, went to the University of Connecticut, and they had the opportunity to do a joint degree. So as you're getting your PharmD, you could also work towards your MBA. Mm -hmm. Um, So I figured regardless if I was going to be a CVS, Walgreens pharmacist, or work in a hospital, um, it would be nice to have a a business background to be able to supplement my science education as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and then now, I mean, I'm in marketing, I'm not even filling prescriptions. So um, I'm, I'm definitely using more of the business side of things and um, those tools and skills that I learned in business school rather than pharmacy school. But um, I'm in the pharmaceutical industry, so it's nice to have that science background as well. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, how do you, how do you end up there is, I mean, when you decided, okay, let's do the pharmacy degree, did you envision yourself like, okay, I'll make a nice paycheck and work at CVS or Walgreens and, and do that kind of like typical, what people think of as a pharmacy job or, or was it like more intentional getting into this more obtuse kind of role? Yeah. So for me, it was, um, I mean, I like to keep my options open and I saw a degree in pharmacy as a way to keep my options open. Um, I knew that I could work in a a retail pharmacy. I could work in a hospital pharmacy and I could work anywhere in the U S. Um, so I liked having those options. It wasn't until later in school that I found out there was different career paths that you could go down and then more specific for me, um, that pharmacists could find themselves in a career in the pharmaceutical industry. Um, so yeah, at first it was keeping my options open, could work anywhere in the U S made a pretty good salary. Um, so that was kind of my, and I was good at math and science. So that was kind of mm-hmm. 
my interest into pharmacy. Okay. <clears throat> just lost what I was going to say. Oh, um, so you had kind of mentioned, just in case we lose you later on, um, can you talk about the potential new job or is that under wraps? <clears throat> Well, as long as this doesn't get posted today, I can talk about it. <laughs> it, it, it it'll be it'll be a couple weeks. Okay. Yeah. No, I, I can I can disclose that. Um, my actually my current manager does know I'm looking for jobs outside the company. Um, she's well aware that I'm looking to move to Denver. <clears throat> um. So yeah, currently I'm in Cambridge, I'm working for Santa Fe Genzyme. I'm in a global marketing role, so. It's very much a 30,000 foot view of the industry mm -hmm. and how things function, which is, has been great for me because it gives me a great um, broad overview of the pharmaceutical industry. Mm -hmm. But I'm looking for a more um, three, three foot view of the pharmaceutical industry and really um, learn, kind of hone my skills working closely with physicians rather than um, working with other marketers that work with sales reps that work with HCPs. So I'm looking to get that physician customer facing experience. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm looking to get country level experience as well. So it just makes sense for me to get that country level experience in the U S. Um, but what prompted the, the move out to Denver is my girlfriend's um, on. She's about one year away from becoming a registered dietitian. And in order for her to do that, she needs a one-year internship in a mm -hmm. hospital doing mm -hmm. experiential hands-on learning. Mm -hmm. And it's similar to a MD residency program where there's a match. Okay. Um, so she found out, uh, it was early April, that she matched with uh, Children's Hospital of Colorado, which is in Aurora, just outside of Denver. Mm -hmm. And then things are going pretty serious for us. So I figured this would be a good catalyst for me to look for a customer facing U.S. Um, role within the pharmaceutical industry out in Denver. And also Denver is a, a pretty cool place to live. My brother lives there and um, there's a bunch of guys on EMJ that live out there, too. And it's, I mean, it's just it's very outdoorsy and People are very in tune with their fitness and, and well-being, so um, very much similar to my personality. Um, but yeah, as you mentioned, I'm, I had an interview last Wednesday. It was a, a live face-to-face -face interview, and I'm supposed to hear back today. The guys, the hiring manager is located in California, um, so I guess it's still 1.30 p.m. for him, so I guess he's got a yeah. few more hours. But uh I'm hoping uh, to get that call anytime now, just saying what the next steps are or if I got the job. So, yeah. Um, well, yeah. I was like, I, I don't, you know, I never want the episode to be cut short if we don't have to, but this is one of those cases where it's like, well, if you have to cut it short and you get good news, like it's fine. <laughs> you yeah. know, I prefer you take care of it. Like, I mean, Denver's a, a, a beautiful <clears throat> city. I actually have a friend uh, that I ran with in, in college who lives in Aurora. So I've been out there, I've been to Aurora. Yeah. It's like, um, at least from what I gather, uh, nice suburbs, but then you've got access to everything that, you know, Colorado has to offer as far as being outdoors. So, I mean, you know, beautiful place to live. Is there any way to, like, with the match, is there any way to, like, try to match up your job with, like, where she is? Or are you just, like, incidentally looking in the area? Yeah, so with... I didn't start looking for a job until I knew where she matched. Okay. Um, so, I mean, I got a good job. Things are going well. I like it. Um, but it's, I mean, it, it would be a good opportunity for me to get customer facing experience, U.S. experience. Um, so, like I said, this, this was the catalyst that I needed to kind of start actively doing that and not getting mm -hmm. too comfortable in my current position at my job. Um, so yeah, she was looking all out west. So she she was applying to. Um, I mean, we live together now in Cambridge, and there are good programs in the Boston area. Um, but she really wanted to. Um, I mean, she was looking at these programs out west just because, from a from her interest, they're the ones that she they appealed mostly to her. 
Mm -hmm. Um, They're very clinically focused. The one she got is actually focused in pediatrics as well. Um, So it was her top choice. And it's a world-renowned children's hospital. So she was very excited. And yeah, she got her, her top choice. And it's, I think there's like, they take three, they take three interns and over a hundred people apply. So it was, <laughs> we, we both didn't, we were being very realistic and thinking that she wouldn't match with Colorado yeah. just because the odds were not in her favor. Yeah. Um, but apparently she had a, she's smart and she had a, um, some good experience. Um, and they liked her. There was an interview part of the matching process. Um, so yeah, she matched with Colorado and then, yeah, she matched in early April. And then I started looking for jobs out in the Denver area so I could move with her. Um, her program doesn't start till July 22nd. So I do have some time to figure oh, no, out a job. Yeah. Um, so hopefully I get good news today and I'll secure a job. Um, worst case scenario, I, I wouldn't get a job right away and I would be fine uh, being fun employed for a little bit and maybe focus more on training or traveling or something like that. Well, and, like uh, you got a lot of skills and I mean, it's, I, I like to back up a little bit and say, like, tell her congratulations for me because that's, I mean, that's that's big, especially you know when you get exactly what you wanted. <clears throat> you can't you can't ask for more than that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, you, it seems like you've got a lot of skills. Like, it, you're probably pretty employable, just generally speaking. <laughs> so I, I wouldn't so. be too too worried if I was you. Um, I am curious though, like, you know, you're talking about coming from like where you are now, like 30,000 feet and coming down to like the three feet view, like what for you, what are you missing? Like what, what would in, in whatever your job you're looking at, like what would a typical day look like for you? Like that, you know, that you're actually looking for. So the, not my current role, but the role that I'm right. Yeah. What, what you want to do, like what, what would that actually look like? You know, you go ahead into work and what are you doing? Yeah. So it's more, day-to-day uh, executional aspects of biopharma marketing. Um, so r- right now in my 30,000 foot view, I'm focused more on strategy and then rolling out that strategy to the regional and country level marketers who are then rolling it out to either the field marketers or the sales reps who are then executing on that strategy and they're doing different ways of executing. Um, so yeah, very right now it's very much a high level overall strategy, making sure that us as a company, whether we're talking to a physician in Japan or a physician in the U.S., we're having the same conversation, we're saying the same messages, um, that there's no confusion there uh, between what we're saying to our customers, um, and our customers are the physicians for the most part. In some cases, it's either payers or patients, but. For the most part, in, in this example, it's it's the physicians. Um, so what I would be doing in this new role is more of that having that direct conversation with the physicians. Um, and there's different depending on what the strategies are. So I am applying um, the position that I'm waiting to hear back from is a different company. Um, so I don't quite know their strategies or what they would be looking mm-hmm. to do. But um, this specific role would be customer facing. So I'd be engaging directly with the physicians Mm -hmm. and um, there's these speaker programs that are very common in the industry where we would contract with a physician to give a, a talk, an hour long presentation to other physicians talking about the disease, talking about the therapy um, as a way to promote our product or to raise awareness of the disease. Um, in addition to that, there's a lot of activities around congresses um, mm-hmm. or conferences. Um, so where medical societies host these events, and um, it's a big opportunity for the pharmaceutical industry to have a presence there. And from a regional or national level, be able to interact with many different physicians and get those messages across to them. Um, so yeah, for the role I'm applying to, uh, a lot of the responsibilities would be um, engaging with the physicians to conduct those speaker programs or um, also planning on behalf of the company, planning our activities at a conference. 
Mm -hmm. um, making sure there's a booth, making sure there's materials in the booth, uh, making sure that we're aligned with the messages that we want to say to the physicians. Um, if there's any senior leaders in the company that want to meet with any of the physicians that um, I would set up those meetings. Um, so yeah, it's, it's very much more hands-on customer facing, mm -hmm. um, which I do have a little experience <clears throat> um, doing in my current role because there's been a few Congress Congresses that I've planned as well as um, different events that I've planned where we've had physicians involved. So I've been working directly with physicians. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that this role that I applied to and I'm waiting to hear back today, if I got it or not, that they can see that um, it's not a drastic shift of what I'm currently doing. It's kind of um, I'm able to take my global experience and bring it to this new role mm. and still be able to do the role while providing uh, an extra perspective to the team. So kind of so I was like, I'll try to summarize if I understood. So you're basically going from where you are now, where you're you're building the framework of marketing to um, actually becoming, I'll call it a cog, but I don't mean that in a demeaning way. Um, be, you know, becoming a cog in the framework and executing, you know, one part of the strategy, right? Yeah. Okay. Would you, since you have that experience building the framework, which for anybody who's ever been in business for themselves or done any kind of marketing, you know that like putting that framework all together is not an easy job. Um, would would you be able to send information back up back up the chain to help kind of affect the framework from the bottom up, or would you just be executing? Yeah, no, that's a good that that's a really a good question. Yeah, no, I would be taking any valuable insights. So in this new role, I'd be taking any valuable insights that I get from my interactions with physicians. Mm. And it's, yeah, it's a two-way communication. Not only would right. I be executing on what our framework is and what the tactics are, but I would also be listening to the physicians and then reporting back what I hear saying, hey, this is our strategy. Physician, Dr. So-and-so thinks we should be doing this. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should reconsider this. So yeah, th there would be that that feedback that I would be providing as well. So it's really um, this customer facing role where I'm the liaison between the company and the physician. And it's a two way communication street where um, we would be telling them things as well as I would be listening and then reporting back up saying, this is stupid, we should be doing something else. Or <laughs> this physician thinks this language is terrible, let's reassess, et cetera. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you're, you're correct. 